Good morning, everyone. So today I'll be going over chapter three. Uh, I don't think we can cover all of it today. Um, and um, yeah, so please feel free to interrupt me and correct me wherever uh, you feel necessary. I'm uh, not the best person to answer all the questions, but we can have a discussion if there is any uh, questions. So chapter three is about storage and retrieval. <clears throat> And all this chapter talks about is how the data is literally stored on the single node and how the data gets retrieved. Uh, um, and the components here they talk about is in memory cache and the on store, like the disk that we are going to store the data on. Um, so uh, yeah, like it, this chapter talks about the data models and how queries are interpreted by the databases and what happens under the hood uh, because this will uh, help us find the right solution and tune the performance. Uh, and uh, in general, like the storage engine is divided into two major uh, categories. One is the log structured storage engine, and the other one is uh, page oriented, which is more like B trees. Uh, the the author also talks about. Uh, other two categories uh, based on whether it is transaction processing or analytics. Um, but that I'll try to cover in the next uh, because I didn't have time enough to cover all of it today. So um, data structures, uh, he starts with talking about um, most of the databases internally use a log, which is basically up and only log, uh, data file. So as soon as a new data comes in, you just keep on appending the data to the end of the file. Uh, the good thing about this is it's a O of one system uh, because writing is uh, very straightforward. But if you were to read from this file, it would take O of n in the worst case, which is bad. Um, so the next thing is like to retrieve the data efficiently, we can index the data based on uh, some category. Like uh, I think that's where the primary key comes into picture. Uh, but like based on that indexing, we can quickly retrieve the data that we want. But adding indexes can slow down the writes. So that's the downside. Uh, so then uh, the author goes into talking about hash indexes. So we all know like what hash table is. Uh, basically it's a key value data store, uh, very similar to dictionary in Python. And uh, yeah, so uh, if the database writes only to append new entries to the file, hash table can simply store the key as shown here. Uh, and then the byte offset where the data is present on the data file. Um, but the downside of this is like all the keys and this mapping of where it, it is stored on the disk needs to be in memory. Uh, and the problem occurs when we cannot fit all the keys on, uh, yeah, on the, in the memory. And uh, that's where I think uh, the discussion goes into the other two forms that is LSM and B-trees. So here it's just a image of what I described above. So we have a key and a byte offset where the data is stored. And we, uh, as and when the new data comes in, we are going to keep on appending the data to the end of it. So the next thing is like to avoid running out of space, a good solution is to break these logs of data uh, and perform compaction to remove duplicate keys. So, uh, we can have like a daemon process or like a background thread which can perform compaction. And the advantage of compaction is we will be referring to less number of, of data file segments when we are querying a data. So uh, 
when a read happens uh you go in the reverse order you look at the latest uh, file segment and see if uh, there is a key present of, uh, like there is a key uh, present if it's not then you go to the previous uh, data uh, sorry file segment uh, but we can have like multiple file segments so having a background thread which is uh, compacting the data like removing the duplicate keys and merging into a big file segment is useful here so that's what this figure talks about uh, yes and another small thing i forgot to mention is like basically each of these file segments uh, has its own in memory hash table so uh, yeah in order to find the key uh, value for a key we first check the most recent segments hash map if the key is not present we check the second most recent segment and so on and merging process keeps the number of segments small may i interrupt you sure yeah so you said for each and every data file segment will have an in order sorry in memory hash map mm -hmm. okay but um, so how is the flow for you know looking for any key is it because we will still have an in memory um, the previous what you showed right so these are just you are referring to the data file segments mm -hmm. so first you will have to look at that in memory yeah hash map right yeah because that might be the latest updates and then you go in that and then you go in the in memory hash map for the data file segments yeah okay okay so that is the flow so this in memory hash map will always be there which will be the most recent one exactly yeah okay okay thank you um and then uh just a few more real implementation details is instead of having it in form of a, a comma separated variable file uh, it will be in terms of bytes for compaction like for having a compact memory and uh, uh, like when you have deletes uh, you don't really delete an entry from the data file you just mark it as expired or something it's called uh, tombstone tombstones yeah uh, so and then like during the merging and compaction process which is happening in the background you uh, you remove it you don't consider that key value pair um, and the index will be snapshot for fast crash recovery in case uh, there is uh, some failure it's useful um, and uh, if we have like really long values i think checksums are required in, uh, just to detect whether we have partial written records uh, and many of the implementation try to keep just one writer thread so that uh, there is no uh, conflict in terms of concurrency and the writes are always in sequential order so again, to summarize, like uh, the problem with hash table is like uh, the entire key, all the keys should fit in the memory, and uh, it is not efficient for range queries. Um, that's another uh, disadvantage of this. Try could be other option, right? Sorry. A try could have been other option, isn't it? It won't have occupied that much of space. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, for a uh, for a data something like this, yes, but we can literally have anything as key and anything as value. So, uh, like, let's say if the key is URL and value is counter, uh, so how many counts are there? Correspond to that, yeah. So. Yeah, but if you have multiple columns, how will you store it and try that? I, I'm not sure. See, like to tombstone is very common in Cassandra, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, multiple columns. 
I mean, typical uh, R D S equal D B. I mean, R D B M S right? Relational uh, like corresponding. You one key you have and multiple columns could be there, right? So like uh, multiple way. list of values if you have corresponding to one key. There could be that could be the case in the hash map, right? Yeah, that could be the case hash map. Yes. So, uh, yeah, like the value is your uh, list of values, right? So hmm, instead of, of sorry, no, the same thing I was repeating. Like list of values you can have corresponding to one given key. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, then try won't be useful in that case. I think right. Like, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, so then now the next uh, like logical step is to kind of make uh, take care of these two uh, issues and that's where the author goes into. So um, we have SS tables, uh, the concept of SS tables, which is sorted string tables. Uh, and this is a concept that's used in LSM trees. Uh, so the idea is to sort the keys in uh, in segment tables. Uh, and uh, what we are basically doing is all the keys in each of the segment tables are sorted, as you can see here. Um, and the advantage of this is the merging is much simpler and efficient. Uh, it's essentially similar to the sorted K linked list problem on lead code. Uh, if you all are familiar with that. Uh, so maybe like one question is, uh, what if there are two segments with the same keys? Then we know that uh, every segment has kind of a timestamp associated with that. And we need to basically take the segment, which is the most recent and discard the older uh, values from the older segment. So that's what is being, uh, that's what is, will be done. So here, like uh, compaction will be a very easy process. Compaction and merging. Uh, so this is how it looks like after compaction and merging. And because the keys are sorted, we can you can imagine that we can also now have range based queries uh, because uh, like entire range might fit in like one segment or uh, at like two adjacent segments uh, around the segment that we are interested yeah. in. I mean, a quick question. So sorting happen at the segment level or the in-memory level? It happens in memory. Okay. No, first time when you are sorting the key. So that's at the segment level, right? When you're searching the key? No, sorting, sorting. sorting. Sort yeah, sorting will happen in memory itself, and then you flush. So okay. Yeah, then you flush the data into the file segment. So the file segment will also be sorted, isn't it? Yeah. By default, file segment will be sorted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then this in memory will become a bottleneck, right? For most of them, like first whatever the size of the in memory RAM only, right? First it goes to RAM, then it will flush it into a system, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, mm -hmm. but because that we had the same issue in Cassandra, right? That RAM was, I mean, in memory was a uh, was a bottleneck over there. So they create segment of logs, like segment of memory table, something like that. Or what is your thought? I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm also not entirely clear. Like, so uh, a few things happen. Uh, in LSM trees, like I I'll cover in a minute, but let's okay. get back to this. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, now we, we can see that uh, we can have this sparse in memory index. So, uh, I'm still uh, not in the LSM tree, uh, like I'm not explaining LSM tree, like here uh, I'm just covering the sorted string table. Um, and what here uh, the diagram is showing is, uh, we have an in-memory index, but um, we don't have to have all the keys present. We can just have like the first hand, like 
the first word of the uh, like, uh, like if you take consider this range i i don't have to key, keep all these keys i will just keep handbag and then directly handsome so if i want something like handicap i know it will lie between these two keys so i'll quickly go to that block and uh, from there i can do like a binary search which is a log and operation uh, to find like handicap so uh, the the amount of keys that you need to keep in the in memory will be less because of the sorting uh, like because of the sorted structure so that's what is being discussed here and further because uh, everything is sorted we can also technically um, compress this chunk of data uh, and whenever we retrieve we can decompress so that way we are storing uh, we are saving the storage and the io bandwidth so in a structure like this like the read operation would be something like uh, o of k times log n where k is the number of ss tables and n is the size of ss table so corresponding to every in memory we'll have ss table or like multi i mean ss table would be like a very big thing right it's on hard disk right yeah ss table uh, is on disk yes but so multiple in memory disk uh, multiple in memories uh, this could be the right maintaining the sorted key right and those can be merged into our ss tables right yeah so i think like every ss table will have a in memory index okay but it will be sparse like it, it it need not keep all the keys it will roughly keep a few keys Uh, earlier like someone brought up the concept of mem table uh, like I, I, i'm still not covering that but here like they are just showing the structure like every ss table will have a in memory index but mm -hmm. the keys are sparse and like we are just talking about the advantages of it being sorted and uh, it being compressible well is it not like first you have a mem table which will be in in memory and then you will flush to the Hard disk that will be a SS table, isn't it? Yeah. In yeah. memory itself is mem table, right, Santosh? And then yeah, yeah. So in memory you will have a mem table, but when it crosses a certain uh, size, that will be flushed as a SS table. So you will have another okay. in memory mem table, which will be the latest one. Yes. So Santosh, like what you are mentioning is like SS table along with mem table. So that's where I was going next. Oh, okay. Okay. No. Uh, but here like i uh, the the stress is like every ss table will have a in memory index table um here we are not like but mem table is like you are keeping key and value right but yeah like i don't want anyone to confuse this with the mem table so right right, right. Yeah. yeah so that is just an indexing into that uh, ss table yeah yeah okay an additional data structure yeah okay. and the fact that it is sparse it is taking less space on the in the in memory which was the issue earlier in the hash tables okay okay yeah, yeah makes sense yeah thanks sure yeah. uh so now like after uh, we like he talks about constructing the ss tables and how lsmt is in general built so um while maintaining the sorted structure on disk uh, we have two options b trees and avl trees um when a write comes in uh, we insert the entry to uh, in memory data structure which is called mem table uh, and when mem table uh, gets bigger than some threshold uh, we create a new mem table uh, uh, create a new mem table to handle new incoming writes because we don't want to interrupt that and then we write the old mem table to the disk and that becomes as a stable um for reads we first try to find the key in mem table and then 
in the latest segment and then the segment after that. So it it goes in that order. And in the background, we run the merging and compaction process. So here, like there is one issue uh, that is what if suddenly uh, our system crashes? So uh, to, our, like, to take care of that, we can keep like unsorted log uh, which is basically a uh, write ahead log. I think it's called write ahead log, W A L. Yeah. Um, and that's directly being dumped into the disk. So you can reconstruct the mem table based on that uh, if at all your system crashes. And this uh, entire system, whatever I described above, is LSM tree. So one yeah. query like uh, once you write to the mem table, right? Mem table is full and you flush everything through the SS table. Mm -hmm. So while doing the read, there won't be anything in mem table, right? Because you would overwrite the new information, right? So why they are saying for reads first try to find the key in mem table? That would be an index table, something like that, right? Yeah, uh, getting well. When new writes comes, you'll overwrite, right? So let's say if you want to read the previous thing, it mm -hmm. won't be there in the mem table, right? So if that happens at the moment you are like uh, flushing the data, but before you flush, like it will, it will take some time before you flush the data. So when, like, your question is why are we looking into mem table? Is that right? Exactly. Yeah, because we have already flushed the previous data, right? So I next time new writes will overwrite over them, right? So we won't be able to if you want to read the previous one. You won't yeah, but, but if your writes are like continuous, uh, remember here we I mentioned that when when we are when we are ready to flush the data to the uh, in uh, to the disk, we create a new handle for another mem table momentarily because we don't want to interrupt the writes. So you still need to check there before you go into the disk. Okay, so if it is not there, I mean that will save our calls, right? I mean, yeah. The, yeah rather than looking into the disk. Yeah. Because I think even memtable copying into disk takes some time, so there yeah. will be some transition time also. Yeah. yeah, but after let's say let's say x amount of time, x unit of time it took. Right after x unit of time, I want to read something, but new writes started coming. Right, so previous writes it will be overwritten by this, right? So will I be able to find the old info in the mem table? That yeah, because that will still be in the memory, you know, even if it's still co being copied into as an SS table, but you still have that copy because it won't flag off uh, uh, that it has been converted to an SS table unless and until it is completely copied. So you still have another mem table in the in memory, mm -hmm. which will be preceding to the new one. Yeah, this one. So there must be some TTL also, right? To so that the recent information, like after once you copy everything to this, should I remove the? I mean, should I give the permission to write over the previous records which are written? Well, I think these mem tables which are in transit, they are in queue. There might be more than one also. That is what I think. It depends on how yeah how much uh, time it is taking to copy as a converted into an SS table. But then you will have that list of mem tables you still have an access to. Yeah. Okay. That is, I, I, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah it looks like that. Uh, LSM, LSM tree is something like the Redis database is implemented? I think Cassandra. Redis. Cassandra, I think, uses LSM. Yeah. Oh. I think uh, Redis data was, it works similar way. But Redis so, doesn't have info for large amount of time, right? It's an in-memory DB and after some time. It's small in size, size right? Redis, not like the, uh, the typical DBs, right? No, it's just in-memory. In-memory, yeah. Small amount yeah. of data for a certain period of time. You can but you but, can still uh, range query, you can do all those things, yeah. 
Yeah, but, but Redis <laughs> has different data structure. One of them is list, list. just skip linked list. list. Yeah, another one is sorted list, and sorted list is skip list in Redis. Yeah, skip and list. another one is, yeah, is hash set. A hash set is just like hash set as we do. As I know, Redis does not use LSM. And one of option to implement mem table is to use skip, skip list. Yeah, we can use red black tree, avl tree, and skip list as well. Yeah, we just if we use a, a, a tree, yeah, we need to do in order traverse. Yeah, in order in order to receive a sorted list. Yeah, be sorted list of of records it's what it's what is mem table is yeah so uh, does that mean that uh, we are going to take more than o of one time to write into lsm tree uh, yeah it, it depends on structure different database use different structure to implement mem table some of them use skip list it's like uh, rock rocks db yeah another one like um, cassandra use three, three structure yeah and we have to that, yeah it's but in order traverse of three i guess it's o of n as well yeah it's so often to that particular map table maybe yeah mm -hmm. worst case good. maybe so login also is possible or maybe o of one also yeah so um but i think uh, like can we assume that since we are uh, we have uh, this uh, right ahead log um uh, it is always the writes are always faster which is o of one and then in the background, it might build the tree uh, which is in memory, like in the mem table. Can we assume that? I think so. That should be the way. Because, uh, like, we need to build AVL tree only in mem table, right? Like, when we are writing, uh, flushing it out, we are just, we, we already have it sorted and we are like just reading out of the. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I I think it's uh, uh, idea of mem table is to buffer update. Yeah, because we need to reduce write and amplification. Yeah, it's not about. Uh, yeah, we could write to to work everything. Yeah, uh, but it will not help us. Yeah, because it will not be sorted. Yeah, we need just buffer and write sorted in order to have a sparse index. Yeah, and we need to think about write ampli amplification. Uh, so I, I suppose it's not about O1 or something like this, but not, not sure. Maybe someone could add something. So you see, whenever we are constructing a map table or just appending, that time itself it is being sorted, right? I don't think so. To be honest, it would be it would be not appropriate. It would be take too long time to insert new value. Yeah, we mm. can just use a tree because it's in short time will be walk of n. Yeah, but mm. when we uh, serialize to it, when we have to do in order travels, it will take all of n. But if we would use already sorted, we will have it will take us too much time to insert new value. No. Yeah. So writing will be it. Yeah. So I think like uh, to summarize, uh, the, uh, even though we are like, uh, we are using AVL tree to build the mem table uh, to make it sorted because the size of the mem table, the amount of keys we are going to hold in mem table is very small. It is, it is uh, like still fast, like the writes are still fast. But I, I'm not sure that the number of keys small. Mem table size, I suppose Cassandra is about 100 megabyte, no? Mm, that's huge, yeah. Let me, I, I will check and send it to chat. I'm not sure about it. Okay, that, yeah, but that makes sense. Yeah, that is, if, you, if you Google it, right? LSM tree saying like writing into the memory is very faster way, right? So that's the, even I'm not sure how, but that is the main advantage of LSM tree. Because we don't have all the keys in uh, the mem table, like I'm assuming that that structure, even though it is hundred of hundreds of megabytes, it's I still see. faster I than see. when you compare to B tree, where you are like 
keeping all of it uh, oh i see i see i see because of the index of the uh, uh, key value pair will be in a memory so not the actual key right so the range key basically so which is less in comparison to the whole key set Oh, it's it's not that a structure. Uh, the main idea here is that we can buffer writes, and because sequential writes is much faster compared to random writes. Yeah, if we have one hundred gigabyte, oh sorry, one hundred yeah megabyte, yeah, it will take us less than one sec second yeah to write it to to even to hard disk, but because it's sequential write, not a scatter scattered random writes. Yeah. So the sequential writes will be something to a log, right? First, and then you'll form a mem table. Yeah, and when we push mem table, yeah, we also use sequential write because it we will create a whole uh, sequential segment on disk. So this table is just a, a sequential side or se sequential file, yeah. But your uh, mem table doesn't have the segment key value pair, right? So that's the difference. You have segment, segment key uh, and value pair in memory. Right, Amir? Uh, I, so, sorry, I didn't get the question. So actually in mem, mem table, the mm -hmm. key, whatever you have, so it's a one level of key, right? From the segment. It's yeah. not that, it's a segment key, right? Yeah. So it's a comparatively less than, suppose you have a hundred segment, right? Mm -hmm. So most may, you have a hardly 10 keys in your mem table. Exactly, yeah. So when you are writing, so it's pretty fast, right? So it knows where to write and what segment is going to write. No, it, no, uh, it's, uh... How does it know which segment to write? I mean, it because you have a segment key in in memory, right? Mem table. That index table is the right which will keep track of where this key falls in. Right. Yeah. yeah. So mem table itself will be hashed based on some ID or some key, isn't it? So that is the way it will find uh, the fastest way to insert anything. Because first you'll insert into a log that will be very quickly. That will be a sequential, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you actually go to the mem table by finding where it has to copy based on its key. Exactly. It'll look into the mem table. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's a one level off, right? Yeah, I think that might be. I'm also slightly agreeing to that. May. But yeah, it, it's complex. Sometimes you know you get uh, tripped off with more understanding. Also, yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, um, just a minute. Sure. Sure. I thought we can just please correct me if I'm going wrong. So what you guys are saying is there is mem table. And as and when I have this key value pair K1V1, K2V2 coming in. Okay, I'm now tell me what is key one here? What is key one? What is the value one? So that's key is something you have to generate and value is your segment, right? The actual segment. So we can forget about generation of the key. Like, let's assume that we have a key value pair. He's no, saying this is the input now. Someone it. actually someone actually uh, gave these inputs. So now uh, we will build like some kind of a red black tree or avial tree and add this key value pairs here in the mem table. And we'll also write it. So let me is called this as disk. So we'll write this in whatever order it comes in, uh, in the write ahead log. Now, uh, everything here is being kind of sorted. Uh, but as soon as it reaches some size n, we will flush this data into a segment file, a sorted segment file. This will be sorted because uh, the data here is sorted in terms of tree, but here it will it will kind of get mapped into some kind of table which is sorted where K1 okay. is smaller than K2 and so on. Okay. And 
uh, we keep on like having bunch of these. Uh, this this is the latest one, and this is like the oldest one. And uh, there will be a process which is merging these two into one. Uh, that's like compaction and merging. But does this make sense? Like this is a disk and this is in memory. Yeah, I think there is an index table also, right? Between mem table and hard, I mean SS table. Which points you in which segment of SS table will this keep on? Yeah. So yeah, we we also have like uh, in memory index. Hmm. Yes. So this is in memory index table for every SS table. Yeah. Which you, so that while reading, you will directly rather than scanning the entire disk, you will directly. Uh, it will have a key range and the offset, I think, corresponding to that key. It will yeah, take yeah. that statement. Yeah. Yeah, we, we will not have all the keys. We'll have like some of them, uh, like a sparse indexing. And then this will map to the location or whatever. Yeah. Even if it maintain, in value, it maintains the offset, something like that, right? In Even in that segment at which offset it is lying. Yeah, here, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One but, key can be one key can be in multiple segments, right? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, there is no mm -hmm. in place update, right? So, same key, uh, one key can be in multiple segments. So, how does that in memory index help? Yeah, so the thing is, uh, like, we know that this SS table is the latest one. So even if like K1 exists in say this table, you consider this, I mean, you first look into this as a stable and you uh, pull out V1. Uh, even though there is K1 here, like, it, uh, like during compaction process, we know this is stale because uh, this is the most latest uh, SS table and this is the older one. Yeah, so what you are saying is correct for key value, but if we have multiple columns and we are writing only uh, pa, uh, subset of the columns, then yeah, so um, I don't know about that. Like uh, here, he talks only about key values, but I'll I'll try to look into that and uh, yeah, and even if we use white column. Yeah, we can have same. Uh, we can we can we can have some part of row in one segment tree and another column in in another cell in another SS table. We I I want to say that we sometimes it depends on um, form for format. Yeah, it's as example, it's white column. We have to scan all all SS tables. Yeah, in order to construct, in order to construct, construct a whole row like it's it's like Cassandra does. Yeah, but so even if you have multiple columns, they are still um, considered like values, isn't it? Yeah, but we can we can have a, a different column in different SS table. Yeah, because. Okay. Because uh, as example, it could be white comb database. Yeah, when uh, when we have uh, different when when we have different number of columns in each SS table. Yeah. But then they all will be all those columns will be pointing to a key, isn't it? A single key. Yeah. Yeah. Single key. So uh -huh. and we and we will have to scan all SS tables. Yeah, in order to construct the whole columns. Okay. So, but will that key not keep some pointers to the respective uh, the segment tables or the locations in the segment table? Uh, sometimes some some databases uh, where here we are talking about index, yeah, index, and we can have SS tables and not far from SS tables, yeah, another structure on disk, yeah, which is index, parse index. Some database call it mark mark file. Yeah, mm -hmm. when it keep key, key and offset, and uh, key offset, key offset, something like this. Mm. Interesting. Okay. 
Good. Yeah, and uh, just one. Uh, and so we are, do, are we agree that when we push as a uh, mem table, we need to create new file. Yeah, we need to each time we need to create new file. We need to sort out that and and write and use sequential write in order to populate. Yeah, to push data to disk. Are yeah, so, agree on that? Yeah. yeah, so these sorted tables are nothing but files. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And it will be sequential, right? So it will be very fast. Yeah. Especially in the hard drive when sequential write is much faster compared to re random read. Exactly. Random write. Yeah. If you have a, a spinning disk or something, yeah, sequential writes are much faster. Yes. Yeah. To answer Uday's question, so Uday, is that what you are also saying about the wide column? Yeah, I I wasn't aware that there would be an in, in memory sparse index. I mean, I thought for every segment there's a sparse index. So I thought that way. But if it is a key value pair, this in memory sparse index would uh, uh, would work. Yeah. But okay. if there are multiple columns, um, it might not uh, give us the what. Why, it is why would why would it not work? Like here, we don't we don't have values, right? Here we have offset uh, to the location of the value, like, um, and then the values can be all the columns of the data, uh, like that particular row. No, but as Nick said, right, it is going to be in a different access table also. The column. Or we can have uh, reverse indexing, like offset and corresponding to that, which all keys are there, right? But I don't think so that that's a workable one. Okay. Yeah, May like maybe. Offset yeah, we'll have to look at this. Also, uh, the mem table can be a man it might not be actually sorted so there are implementations where uh, people use list etc as well list kind of implementations where it doesn't where the data doesn't need to be sorted but while writing it might write it in sorted repre uh, sorted representation really okay uh -huh. Yeah, but just keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, right. I understood. It. Yeah, someone has to sort it before writing sort in sorted tables. I mm. think that's the key idea. You can either do it here or like somewhere uh, will have to sort it. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. This was a nice explanation. We'll go back to the other screen just a minute. Yeah, so um, here, like I just wanted to mention uh, another advantage of mem table is we are reducing the network bandwidth um, because we are first storing everything in the mem table and then. Uh, we can compress and then write it into SS table. So, and all of it is written at once. So we can control the bandwidth between the in-memory and the database. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, this LSM tree is, he mentions that it's used in Cassandra and HBase and also level DB and rocks DB. Um, so any system that uses principle of merging and compaction of sorted files is LSM systems. Uh, and another performance optimization uh, is using Bloom filters. So to look up, uh, we can take a long time because first we'll check in uh, in memory uh, mem table and then we'll uh, look into SS tables, but uh, looking into SS tables, especially when SS tables are very large, can be time consuming. So that's where the Bloom filter concept comes in. 
So we essentially have Bloom filters for every SS table. Uh, and the way, like the key idea of Bloom filter is, uh, it has a lot of false positives, but zero true negatives. So uh, what it means is, Bloom fil filter might by mistake tell us that the data is present in SS table, uh, but when you actually check in SS table, the data won't be there, uh, which is fine, but it will never tell uh, that the data is, um, sorry, I got confused. I think false negative is not possible, right? Yeah, false negatives is not possible. You are right. Mm -hmm. um, what it means is it will never say that the data is not like it will not falsely tell that the data is uh, present. Not present. Yeah, data is present, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess you guys know it. So. Sorry about that. Yeah. I got confused. Um, so, so if it is present, is confusing. You know. Yeah, if it is present, you they may say yes or no, right? But if it is not present, then definitely it will say it's not present. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good summarize. Yeah. 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 Can you repeat that again? Sorry. Like if 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 some see if it is present, then mm -hmm. it may or may not say like both. I mean, uh, it can say present or not present both. But if something is not present, then definitely it will say it's not present. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So here, like, uh, it's just summary of what happens uh, for the write request. So we first write it into this uh, uh, write head log. We also write it into mem table, uh, and we update. Like, I think we we need not update right because the ss table like we need to update the bloom filter when we are flushing the data to ss table uh, so i think yeah like i shouldn't have put this three here but when we are reading we first check in mem table that's number one then we key, then we check in the bloom filter corresponding to the ss table if it's if, if it says it's present, then we check the in-memory index of that as a stable. Um, yeah. And in the background, we are building these, uh, uh, like we are merging the SS tables. Uh, yeah, I think that's all here I wanted to mention here. So, Bottom line is uh, in LSM tree, we have a very high write throughput. Uh, hey, one thing, so as per your diagram, the bloom filter for every SS table will always be there in the disk, is it? Yeah, so bloom filter is actually present in the disk, but we also bring it to the in memory so that we can quickly check the bloom filter. Okay, so uh, you bring the whole of that boom filter for all the SS tables into in memory. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So how often you are bringing the boom filter from the uh, disk to memory? So whenever a new SS table is formed, uh, we we need to have like a corresponding boom filter uh, in the in memory, but. I don't know, like when you have compaction uh, process, I think even then we need to somehow update the Bloom filter, right? So I don't know the internals, but. Uh, I think every write request, it's bring the Bloom filter to check, right? To false positive or false negative. Every write, yeah. Um, I think so, but I'm not sure. But even if you do compaction, you know, still the bloom filters are not going to change. But when you're compacting, so you're going to merge two bloom filters again. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So then you'll have to update the in-memory bloom, bloom filter also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. But every bloom filter will have different hash functions, right? So 
okay again you will create some common aspect and something like that right after yeah okay filters they are based on that bit mapping isn't it right yeah bits and then we hash it right based on that if if it gives the same or we use two three hash functions and if they give us the same answer then we say that it's correct okay but the representation is in the form of a bit yes, yes. so maybe it's a single location a bigger one something like that Oh, yeah, whatever the bits say, it, it goes in plus and minus. I think 32 bits plus. And Maybe it might be a bigger one also. Yeah, okay. Bigger one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else uh, related to this before I move? No, no. Okay. So, uh, everything, all the advantages that LSM trees gave in terms of functionality will be also. Uh, possible with B trees, which is um, page oriented data structure, but uh, the trade off is um, uh, like the amount of time it takes for writing and reading. So, the, basically, like all the functionalities are common between LSM and B trees, but the trade offs in, are in terms of read and writes. Uh, so B trees are common in uh, relational databases, and uh, it is similar to binary search, balanced binary search tree, but slightly different. So it's balanced trees wherein um, we, what we do is uh, we have certain range at every level, and each of these are called pages. So uh, each time like between, uh, let's say for example here, like between 100 and 200, we want to add a, date, a new data, like we create like a new page and create references to that again. So <clears throat> this is how B3 looks like. I don't think I did a good job there explaining what exactly it does, but. No, but you did, you did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is what it is, right? Yeah. 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 So at a base level, it will be very big, right? I mean, at the leaf, leaf level. Yeah, at leaf level, it is very big. And also at leaf level is where you will have values. Everywhere else, it is a reference yeah. to the next page. But should not the each and every node of B tree should be of the same size? Yeah, so exactly. So here you can see that every node only has uh, five values. Uh, yeah, five keys and six references. Yeah, it's always uh, have the same size in kilobytes, not a number of nodes. Yeah, uh, it, it's usually eight kilobytes. And uh, the idea of uh, B3 that we do not serialize and, ser and deserialize. Yeah, we, we keep block in the same way in disk and in memory. Yeah, we directly write to memory to block to, to we calculate offset, calculate fee, uh, field size, and something like this. Yeah, and, and write direct to memory. And we do not serialize and deserialize as we have to do in SS table, yeah? Because we in SS table, we have to deserialize in order to have something in, to, to process a row. Mm -hmm. So in mem table, we have to deserialize? Yeah. As a stable, yeah. When when we we write to disk, yeah, we have a let's say a tree, yeah, tree or and f key and value, and we need to uh, to write it as a byte, uh, a byte is to disk, yeah. Okay, so you are saying that when we ag again want to read that as a stable in the memory, so we deserialize and then read it, but it is the same form of uh, copying, isn't it? 
Uh, no, but in bet mm-hmm. in B3 we do not do serialize and deserialize. Yeah, yeah we, this uh, is the block copy. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, we need to actually point. explore more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Munik. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, also there is a property of branch factor here. Which essentially, that's what. Uh, like each page branches into six pages so uh, and the root page contains the full range keys uh, but then the uh, like then it has references to the pages containing the next uh, intermediate range and leaf contains uh, individual keys and the values uh, that's where the values are kind of found and uh, when we are writing, uh, it is going to take more than O of, like it, it is much slower than LSM tree um, because uh, when changing the values in B3, the page containing the values looked up and modified and then returned back to the disk. So we need to pull out the data and then write it back to the disk. Uh, and similarly, when adding new values, first the page whose range contains the key is looked up. And then if there is extra space in the page, uh, we add the key value entry to that. Otherwise, we have to uh, do the process of like splitting into uh, two halves and then updating what the parent page is. So here the example kind of makes it clear. Yeah, so in that case, when we are splitting, so it's my, it means that the whole block will be held, you know, because if we get a similar update for the same in the same block, mm-hmm. so that has to be sequential. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there might be some locking mechanism when it is doing all this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when we update even one byte yeah we will have to uh, to write a whole block whole eight kilobytes yeah to disk and we will not be able to buffer update uh, mm. com- compared to lsm yeah then the block actually modified will be at the particular location so it's not going to be sequential right in that case is it yeah yeah if you modify it let's say one one million blocks yeah we will have to uh, execute one million random writes mm. yeah and it even become worse in case of ssd yeah because when we write uh, to ssd we have to override whole page page in term of ssd yeah we cannot override just small portion we always override and it will impact uh, garbage collector on SSD and it's uh, this structure is not friendly to a for SSD disk. Yeah, it yeah. was developed when uh, spinet disk was <laughs> in in the world. Yeah, and there are some modification of B3. They call it something like uh, the, the idea is to buffer update. Yeah, buffer update and wait for some time before push to disk. B, BV3, Microsoft invented BV3. And I, I think you you they describe it another one, uh, but with similar idea, yeah. When uh, updates are buffered in before before be, before write to disk. So what did you call that tree as BB tree? Uh, BV uh, B double V tree. I will send a link. It's okay. uh, uh, it's was invited oh, by tree, huh? uh, by Microsoft. The idea is not to to update the page, but uh, do something pre, pre, pre uh, list list of updated of updates before each page, yeah, mm-hmm. something like this. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, uh, how to put investigation how to improve this area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, as you rightly said, SSD has a limitation, right? It's a, because you cannot copy a single uh, sector or block. So the whole of block of SSD is slightly different. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thanks. So, um, yeah, like uh, most of the databases have levels up to three or four. Um, 
and with that if we have like 4k pages uh, with a branch factor of 500 we can calculate the size uh, that it can hold so yeah with this example you can see that uh, even with four levels deep and 500 branch factor we can and 4kb uh, pages we can store up to 256 terabytes of data so a few more things uh, the author talks about is how to make b trees reliable um, so when changing values or splitting pages the b trees overwrites data on disk uh, which is a risky operation uh, so if any uh, if anything crashes during the overwrite the index could be corrupted uh, and to avoid this we can again have concept of write ahead log so in case of failure, we can build using the log. And also uh, another care we should take is uh, when we are dealing with multiple threads, because updation through multiple threads can put it in an inconsistent state. So to avoid that lightweight logs, uh, are used to protect trees integrity. I mean, he doesn't go into details, but if anyone has uh, insights on that, we can discuss. The yes, semaphore, I think, right? That is what he's referring, right? Multiple threads, if they are trying to access the B-tree. Yeah, yeah. Some sort of locking mechanism will have, right? Yeah, yeah, looks like it. So I was trying to make a table but it's not like really black and white where LSM is but like, so I'm just putting down some things here in terms of pros and cons of each. Uh, again, just to summarize for write speed, if you want higher write speed, LSM is the winner. Uh, but for faster reads, B tree is winner. Because in LSM tree, though we have everything sorted in each table, we need to check multiple data structures before we finalize whether the key is present or not. Uh, and also we, Bloom filter, right? So we are bringing back the Bloom filter every time. Yeah. So that's why read is faster in B tree. I mean, that was the purpose of B tree. So, yeah. So, what is the time complexity while reading? From B tree, uh, both of them, right? So you have a right. So it it is like you for LSM you need to check LSM uh, sorry mem table first, then bloom of each SS table, and then the SS table itself, which will be um, log operation. So I mean. I don't think we can put it in terms of formula easily. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fine. We'll, we'll deep dive in more detail. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And yeah, so there is concept of a right amplification, but I was not entirely sure what it is. So if anyone knows about it, we can talk about it. it uh, yeah, right amplification, it's, um, it's, uh, it's what we were talking about when in, in, as in case of SSD disk, even if we write just one byte, yeah, we will overwrite whole page inside SSD disk, yeah, and uh, it means we, we wrote, have just wrote one byte, yeah, but we produce it oh, one duty see. page, one oh, duty yeah. page. Okay. Yeah, and if 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 we produce too much duty page, it mm -hmm. will impact next write because garbage collector has to work and free and clean old duty pages. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So the resolution at which you are writing is higher in B tree. Yeah. The. Yeah, it's, I mean the, something. Yeah, yeah, it's something quite measure how mm -hmm. how useful work we do during during a write. If we would write uh, each time the whole page of new data, yeah, okay, we will overwrite just one old 
page yeah mm -hmm. but if we write just one byte it probably be not good for us yeah because yeah yeah so they like in terms of right amplification lsm has lower right amplification so it's the winner um then he also mentions that the compaction process of LSM tree sometimes interfere with reads and writes, uh, and that can uh, the reads and writes can be blocked by the compaction process. So I think write amplification is uh, if you are trying to write, um, let's say one byte of data, how much extra write we are actually trying to put. yeah so so if you are trying to if you are trying to write if the data size is one byte mm -hmm. and how much extra are we writing mm -hmm. um, and that is actually more in b trees uh, in uh, in lsm we might just be writing just the data and uh, the bloom filter or uh, uh, the but uh, in this we might we would have to write the whole page as well as we would need to update the whole uh, uh, the parents as well till the root yeah yeah so that yeah that's what uh, i think uh, nick mentioned yeah yeah thanks so lsm is the winner right like because it has lower write amplification yeah yeah you're saying uh, right application is not an easy definition right it will be more complex mm. yeah 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 mm. it mm. makes sense okay uh, and then Yeah, I don't remember this point, but uh, the like in B trees, like each key only appears once. Uh, so B trees are more attractive in terms of transaction isolation, um, and it can be implemented using locks on range of keys. So, yeah, yeah, because only one key will be present. That is true. Because in LSM and all that, we have multiple. Uh, presence of a key isn't it mm -hmm. yeah so that is what i think yeah, yeah. okay uh, that's all i had thank you everyone for listening to me patiently